Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help, although today it should be called Video Game Help because what I'm doing is I am messing with a power supply board from an Atari Tempest game. Uh, here's the background story on this. I, Tempest is one of my favorite video games of all time and it took me quite a while to get one and I pieced it together for, from a number of different sources. and. Um, I built this thing and it's been working really well and lately it's been kind of screwing up and what's been happening is uh, the, the display in the middle gets all squinched up into like a little tiny little dot even though the game is still playing so I know it's booting up but something weird is going on I did a little bit of research and I found out that that could happen if there's a problem with the power getting to the game usually when power is intermittent what you get is game freezing up or game rebooting and stuff, or the game not even coming up. Um, but apparently, this game, one of the symptoms of uh, inconsistent power is it behaving weirdly like that, like it boots up and it runs, but there's some kind of problem. So, I uh, sometimes I'll send the boards off, sometimes I'll fiddle with them myself. Um, generally speaking, I don't like to dive too deep into like messing with logic stuff on CPUs and stuff. Just if I had a few less games, I probably would. Um, and there's some good people out there that can do board level repair. But more importantly, sometimes now you can buy new boards, especially for pinball machines. But in this case, I don't know if there's any replacement boards. Uh, if the Tempest board sets are really expensive. So this is an easy thing to fix. I was going to see if I could rebuild the caps on this power supply board. So I pulled the board out and I've got, there's a big power supply in the, on the transformer board that, a uh, big cap there that I don't have, so I've ordered that. So in the meantime, I pulled the the main, this other power supply, the rectifier board here, and I'm looking at it, and I realize this has never been messed with. You can see there's no sign of any repairs on the board. Um, it's in relatively good condition, all things considering, but it doesn't really look like it's ever been serviced. What this means is that this that all these capacitors are are really, really, really old, which means that more than likely they're they're not they're way out of spec if they're even working hardly at all. So they need to go. All of these capacitors, they just they're not really designed to last more than like 20 years, and so time for them to go. So I thought, well, do I have? the caps in my stash to to replace these. So I went through and I took a pen and a paper and I wrote down all the things, made a list, then I grabbed my box of capacitors because um, generally speaking when I need like one I order five, you know, and some of these components are so cheap when you get them in bulk, you know, I might have 50 of these capacitors. So I've done it so much now that I actually had had every single capacitor here which I don't know if that's ever really happened where I needed to do a major thing like this and I had every component, but I did. So it's time to recap this power supply board. So a few interesting things about the capacitors. These are all what are called axial capacitors. An axial capacitor is one like this where you've got the capacitor in the middle and the leads are at either end, kind of like a Tootsie Roll or something like that. Um, but there's also radial capacitors. This is a radial capacitor. They're both polarized electrolytic capacitors. They both have a positive and a negative, but one is got the leads. It's just a, the package configuration. One, you've got the packages like that. This is a much more common type of capacitor than this. These are older style, and these are the newer style. Um, and they're completely interchangeable because the specs are exactly the same. The question is, will they fit um, and what's interesting is, see these big capacitors here? These are 3,300 microfarads at 35 volts. This is the exact same capacitor now, 3,300 microfarads at 35 volts. So you can see there's a technology has definitely improved. These things are nowhere near as big as they needed to be or they were in this particular design. So question is, <coughs> in cases where I've got an axial and I want to replace it with the radial, can, will, is it going to work? You know, I'll look at this this right here with the leads, <coughs> and it may not actually fit here. I'm going to have to get a little creative. So what I think I'm going to do is, rather than desolder these caps off the board, I am going to just cut the caps off 
and I'm going to solder onto their existing leads, making sure that I get negative and positive set up right. And then I'll just kind of piggyback this onto the leads because in this case, there's not quite enough space for this for these leads to go into here. So that's another trick you can do, where I can, for example, I can cut this off. Now before I cut it, I'll always note the polarization. See the, the dip in the end, that's towards positive. It's also marked on the board here too, so that's that's important. So I'll just cut this capacitor completely off. Now the other ones I'm going to probably end up desoldering. But for these, and so minus is the shorter lead. So let's see, will it fit? It will fit. It's going to be tight, but it will fit. So what I'm going to do is um, find a little bit of sandpaper. There's some right here. And I'm just going to sand these existing leads, get, the, get some of the oxidization off. And once I do this, I'll probably also reflow the joints where these were plugged in, just in case there's any kind of a, a crack there. So now that I've got that, and I know this is positive and this is negative, so then I'm, I'm going to dip them in a little bit of flux. Right there. Just a little bit. I'll do the same thing with either end here. Okay. Now this is another one of these one-handed solder jobs. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. I can literally position it so the solder's right near it. Take the soldering gun and um, again checking to make sure that my desoldering gun plugged in and powered up, so I don't want I don't want that to burn anything. Checking the polarization, so I'm going to put a little bit of I'm going to tin it first. Okay. I'll put a little bit of it on there. And then I'll just go... All right, I got to hold my hand steady. Okay. So there is one leg on right there. Now let's go take care of the other one. This one might be a little bit easier because I can just put them both kind of next to each other. There we go. Yeah, don't touch it until the solder is uh, hardened. Well, I probably should have uh, cleaned it a little better too, but there it is. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna work do this joint a little bit more. And I will uh, I will put my um, my meter on this uh, uh, and measure this, check everything. But it looks pretty good. So there's so I'm going to systematically go over the whole board and uh, desolder the ones that I can desolder. And try not to tangle my desoldering gun in to the power line of the regular soldering gun. Okay. 
so I'll work from one side to the other. I'm going to take this this guy off right here. So put the board up. There we go. Double check where the other one is coming. And if it's done right, it just comes right out like that. All right, I'm still making note of the orientation, and it's marked on there, but you always want to make sure that you can tell where you are. I need to get a little stand for this thing. That would really be helpful, wouldn't it? It would be really helpful, because I, I have yet to burn myself with this on... Uh, yeah, point it at me. That's probably the easiest way to get burned as I'm talking about it. I haven't been burned yet. Okay. So I'm not going to bore you guys with with uh, the remainder of this, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace all these capacitors, and I'm going to test the caps when I got them out just to see how bad they were. And that will give me an indication of whether or not this might have been one of the major problems in the machine. Um, and I'll throw this thing in. Maybe I'll check the machine, see if it'll work. But I still think I need to replace that big capacitor on the, on the main thing. <coughs> so there you have it. A uh, little bit of a quickie repair. Uh, always a good idea for any of these old games that are 20, 30 years old. If they've got a power supply with capacitors on it, replace the caps. And uh, you can replace these axials with radials and they'll, they'll be just fine. So uh, stay tuned for more. Visit pinballhelp.com. And I'm on Twitter at pinballhelp and all that other stuff. Thanks for watching.